This video could change your life. I think I realized a while back that I had a bit of a uniform. Like nobody asked me to wear this, but it was like, I always was in a trendy sneaker, a bag I liked, but then the clothing was like a t-shirt, sweatpants, something that didn't really, you know, rep my best look. And this was look one. And I used look one for like most things in my life. And then there was the other end of the spectrum, look two. Look two was like hair done, makeup done, outfit cute, everything on point. But this look only came out to play on three occasions. One was a special occasion, like when I was expected that I would look my best. Number two, if I knew I was taking Instagram photos, I would get this look on and poppin'. And then there was the impulse item purchase. Whenever I got like a new item in my wardrobe, the next morning I was just feeling the vibe. And it wasn't about the actual clothing itself, it was about the fact that I got something new. And then every other day I was like back on my uniform grind, but I realized I didn't actually feel that great about myself. And I felt like I always wanted to dress better, but I didn't really know how. And I just kept buying clothes and I'd feel bad about not wearing them, etc., etc. Hi, I'm Alexandra. Today we're going to enter into the world of womanly. This is a series dedicated to really break down the beginner steps to improving your life through practical application in beauty, in mindset, and ultimately in your confidence. Welcome to Womanly. Now we're gonna get really practical, really logical today on how to dress better. But I wanna note that ever since I've been dressing better myself, my inner feeling and my inner confidence about myself and how I feel and perceive the world has improved. Today we're gonna to talk about making an aesthetic for yourself really achievable, making it simple so that you don't need to be putting more effort or more willpower into looking your best. See, when you're inspired and your mind is clear, it's easy to get what you want. And this is going to improve your life in many, many ways, not just about clothing, it's about you. And I'm gonna be discussing things in three chapters. Stick through to the entire video so that you can get all the information that you need. Grab a notepad or a snack or both and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy, but if you don't, give it a thumbs down. That's important for me to know. I love you guys so much. Let's get into the video. Okay, to start, pull out a piece of paper and a something to write with. Chapter one includes a journal activity. One thing that continues to amaze and impress me about women is like, we just know. We just know stuff. We have like this intuition that is unbridled and whether we know why something is or what to do about it, that's a different story. But sometimes we just know stuff. We just know what doesn't work for us. And these things can be really powerful tools when it comes to transforming. To access your intuition, you need to make space for it. Self-awareness is amazing and super key when it comes to making change. On an average morning, and I wanna write this down, what comes up for you? What prevents you from looking your best? For me, it's just like, I often don't know what to put with what, and my brain doesn't understand how to make an outfit look good, so I just grab something that's easy. For some reason, there's also a disconnect when I'm shopping and I buy things that I never actually end up wearing. So I kind of have some negative self-talk around, why did I even buy that? You're never gonna wear that. And that just doesn't feel good. So again, I tend to avoid looking at some of the things I own. Fill this paper up with what you already have in your heart. I'm a firm believer in the fact that women, we already know what doesn't work for us. And if we can move forward with the rest of the video, having an awareness of what what's actually happening for us inside, this is going to help us understand what steps to take when it comes to improving the way we dress. And feel free to do this exercise in the comments below instead so we can all share and support each other. Let's keep going. It's not guaranteed, and I've realized as I got older, it's not guaranteed that I'm gonna feel like putting effort into my look. That's for sure. I'm not gonna wake up one day and like wanna constantly put effort in. So I realized, although I, my desire is to dress well, I need to really work with myself here. Decision fatigue is a real thing. We see thousands of ads on average every day, and every time we open up our phone in the morning, we're already seeing a, a ton, and we're seeing what we should be buying, and we're getting suggestions as to what should be happening in our lives, and it can make it exhausting. And that overwhelm actually carries over into the choices you make when it comes to putting yourself together in the morning. So that's not gonna stop. I'm gonna keep using my phone, so are you, and we're gonna keep getting bombarded with visuals. That's great, but we can take action and simplify our choices. In this chapter, we're going to talk about undergarments, nails, and jewelry. These are going to be the functions of your every morning, and we're going to refine the choices so that you come up with a signature style that is memorable and makes you feel really good. 
So I used to go into my bras, socks, and underwear, and like, well, the underwear drawer, for example, I would literally open it up, and it was like a nightmare, like uh, trying to decide which one was going to serve me that day, because not all of them were good. Only some of them didn't show through clothing. Only some of them didn't give me underwear lines, and not all of them were comfortable. And my whole life, I'd kind of been taught to shop for underwear uh, as a, a form of artistic expression rather than like for function and really getting granular on what we need from this drawer. Uh, it's actually quite simple. We just need the underwear to be functional, comfortable and not show through our clothing. Once I realized this, I like refined to the lace thong. I refined my underwear drawer over time and I started accumulating the ones that actually work every single time. Some are better quality than others. Some get like saggy or quicker, but that's kind of the cool thing about having all one style and refining your collection on something that can be so simple. This is going to really allow you to see the difference between a good quality one and a bad quality one. And I recommend doing this with the other drawer that doesn't matter as much. I mean, unless you're like personally compelled by socks and you love them, perhaps then it's a good idea to get like some conversation piece socks. But for the most part, I always found myself trying to turn my patterned crazy socks into ankle socks. And then I realized, well, all I like are ankle socks. Like those are the only socks that ever make me happy. So I started purchasing them in neutral tones and that's all my sock drawer contains flat ankle socks that can go with any shoe I own and it's easy. Done. Thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far and there's so much to go. So keep in mind, this is a journey. Let's talk about bras. There are three bras every woman needs and I'm gonna go from least important to most. A plunge bra is key. I always recommend having a bra solution for any garment you own and this one goes with low tops. But for me, it's less of a purchase priority because I don't really show much cleavage. A purchase priority is planning the purchase based on the level of need you have for the item. For me, the strapless bra is definitely number two because it is more key. I wear this with a boat neck top and I'll wear this with a strapless top. It comes in handy to have one that fits you and makes you feel comfortable wearing it. The king of all bras for both you and I is going to be the wear everywhere bra. You're not just going to settle for anything. This is going to be the bra that you wear everywhere. You grab for any morning that you want to feel comfortable and supported, and it should be soft and easy to wear so that you feel happy when you're in it. This bra needs to be nude in color, not colored that it's going to show through clothing. You need to be able to depend on this one because it is going to be there for you every single morning. For an essential this important, it's good to have one to wash, one to wear, and one to spare in your wardrobe. That way you're always covered. A bra that matches your skin tone is the one that will always melt into your skin and not show through your clothing. And that's why I say it's so important that it has to be nude, even though it can feel a bit boring. There are so many diverse brands out there that sell for all different skin tones, which is the way it should be. So I'm gonna link them below uh, and I'll link some of my favorite wear everywhere bras. This is an advanced move. You don't need to rush into your journey with lingerie, but I highly recommend exploring the wonderful world of it. Not all lingerie has to have a sexual tone. In fact, a lot of it is really designed to help you fall in love with yourself. Something that you wear for you, and in fact, knowing you're the only one who knows you have it on can improve your whole day, funny enough. Lingerie is not about how you look in it, it's about how you feel in it, and I don't want any woman to go through her whole life without exploring it, so try a set on and just wear it on a random day. It totally adds an extra something. Now, I've talked about jewelry before. In my femininity video, I explained that it really helps bring a feminine energy to your whole body and your whole feeling about yourself. Get your hands on some really awesome jewelry that's versatile and makes you feel beautiful. You're quite literally going to put this on as a reminder of your own importance to yourself. You're adorning yourself with beautiful little things. And this sends a message to yourself that the day is important and you are important and it's super worthy of wearing something cute like a set of rings or a bracelet. The best kind of jewelry is the kind you can easily get on and off and the kind that elevates any outfit. So keep it simple and dainty. And now it's time to talk about nails. I, you know what? Nails were my first love. Like my very first love was nails, nail polish. I got into clear coat, nude. Then I got into pinks and purples. My mom started letting me wear purples. And I feel like that's what opened the gates to a whole new thing. And I was blown away when I was like, oh my God, there's blue, there's sparkles, there's holographic, there's red, there's orange on Halloween. And I was like hooked hooked and I'll never forget the time I tried black nail polish for the first time. It was around Halloween so there's all the Halloween makeup out and I got my hands on some black nail polish and it just transformed my whole hand. I became captivated not by the nail polish but by the fact that something I could put on the outside would transform the way I felt on the inside. That I never forgot. 
So me and nails essentially go way back. I love nails. I love colorful nails, nail art, everything like that. Why I'm telling you this right now is because even though I love nails, I've actually matured a little bit in my tastes. And I realized that as much as I love really fun manicures, I don't have the capacity to maintain the consistency with them. Often my vision for exciting and beautiful nails wasn't actually going to flesh out that way. They would get chipped or just not look their best. And since my life is much different, I mean, when I was a kid and I first fell in love with nail polish, I had 100% of my free time to myself. Now I've got a lot more responsibility. Things are a lot more inconsistent and I don't necessarily have all the time in the world for my nails. That's why I have to choose what I will maintain. I recommend doing this because it's going to elevate your look if you have your nails looking clean and manicured. So for the most part, I've like made a lifestyle choice to no longer have colored nail polish on my hands. And I'm even when I choose a nude polish, I don't have a full opacity nude. I'll see why in a second. And when I do choose to do a color, it's maybe once or twice a year when I know I'll be wearing a specific outfit. And I'm always really diligent about changing it right back because nude goes with everything. Now, I've been doing my own nails for a really long time. I've played with acrylic nails at home. I've done dip powder nails at home. I've done my own manicures with polish. I've tried gel, and I've always loved a clean, short, manicured hand. This is always a good option if you don't want to go to the nail salon. Your hands are a really big indication of how you take care of yourself, how you feel about yourself, and they do so much for you. So it's really nice to have your hands well maintained. I go for this manicure almost every single time, which is a very feminine almond shape. I'll sometimes go shorter, but I keep it really, really milky. And this gel polish that I have on is barely visible. It's very sheer and it's very jelly. And I do that because you cannot see the line of demarcation AKA you cannot see if it's grown out or not. It always looks fresh. It always goes with everything. And it doesn't matter if I have a few weeks between my appointments because you can't tell where it starts and ends. It's literally the perfect functional manicure. It's a bit of a movement. Like once you start making these choices, your morning goes a lot easier. Everything's functioning for you and it makes it a lot easier to take your look from basic to elevated to classic. And this can help you in areas of your life like career and friendship and you know, you're eliminating decision fatigue and that's worth it in itself. Now it's really going to get good. Bonus, white shirts and foundation, foundation and white shirts. These like literally, this never goes. I've I've been wrestling with foundation getting on my shirts for like so long. It always ends up getting around the collar when I try to put my clothes on in the morning. And we are all about solving our problems here, not letting the pattern repeat itself. So let's just fix the pattern. No more makeup on the shirt. I'm taking an old shirt of mine. I don't mind cutting this up and I'm gonna make it into my dressing square. This is gonna be the little square that's in my closet. And when I have my makeup, on I just put it over my face make sure I'm covering the jaw and then put my clothes on over top this protects your clothes as you're putting them on and then your clothing is always clean and it's kind of satisfying when I look at this thing I'm like oh my god literally all of that makeup would have ended up on this shirt and I would have had to change but instead I don't it's very satisfying oh and thumbs up if you're enjoying the video so far all right now let's talk because I think Sometimes we think there's just gonna be like one thing we can do to dress better, but I think you're realizing it's actually uh, the mindset that you create around getting dressed and the processes you have that support that. Like I could just give a list of items that look good together and you could go buy those, but I believe there's underlying patterns that we all have in terms of shopping habits, etc. And it means that you'll always be chasing a best dress label if you don't start to identify these things. Let me explain. Now we've all heard of wardrobe essentials, but there's actually an opposite item, a style of novelty item that could be ruining the whole wardrobe. It's it's really that we carry this feeling with us when we shop and we get drawn to things that are novelties in disguise. I'm gonna call these novelty items hyper pieces, and they might be the very thing that's ruining your wardrobe. These are not wardrobe essentials. These are the things you see on celebrities. These are the things that you didn't know you wanted until you saw it in a moving ad. And then you were kind of just like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Now the problem with hyper pieces is that owning them usually sucks. And these things often peak at purchase. That's the only time you're actually gonna love them. Now we need to be able to identify what is a hyper piece exactly. Often these items are kind of like a direct attack on your ability to put a good outfit together. So we need to be able to identify them. The first one is the hidden hyper piece. 
With these, there's always an exciting element on a basic essential. So we've got a white t-shirt, just a basic white t-shirt, but this one is exciting because it's got a Gucci logo and I love that about it. Same thing with these pants. They're just jeans, but they have something so pretty about them. Now those items are more obvious, but sometimes we go to buy like a blazer for work or something. And the one we choose has an exciting element like a foiled gold button. Well, that memorable aspect turns this into a hyper piece. The problem with these things are that they are so visually stimulating that you're constantly perceiving yourself as wearing these items and they stand out to you in a way that makes you not want to reach for them. So they become less and less functional over time in your wardrobe. The art of personal style is finding unique hyper pieces that are personal to you that you don't mind wearing again and again. A good wardrobe is made up of both essentials and hyper pieces, but those hyper pieces must be native to things you actually genuinely love that you don't mind reaching for them again and again and again. That's why it's important to check in with your own personal style. For me, I love to wear like black t-shirts, leather jackets, white t-shirts, just that simple edgy style. So a pair of angel wing jeans is totally a hyper piece for me. Number two, the loud hyper piece. This is the one that we can all recognize. This is the one that as a girl, as a woman, this will captivate you. The beauty of shiny things, the beauty of beautiful, bright florals or things that are just exciting to look at. They're really artful actually. And loud hyper pieces often in the right environment in a store that is curated and decorated look so beautiful and easy to understand. However, when you put this into your wardrobe next to all your other loud hyper pieces, your brain literally is like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with any of this. And the math of it is way too confusing and it becomes really difficult to understand how do you put any of this together? It's not that you should avoid these, it's just that you should buy less of them. Often loud pieces require additional purchases, so it's really important to choose what's personal and flattering for you because when you try to style an entire outfit like this one, where even the bra is a hyper piece and each item is in such fierce competition that it makes pairing them together so stressful, you just wanna grab sweatpants. To dress comfortably and easily in the morning, only 25% of the wardrobe itself should be hyper pieces. The rest should be wear everywhere essentials. And the third kind of hyper piece is the hyper silhouette. Think mules, belt bags, and extreme slits in dresses and skirts. I recommend trying to identify these as the things that are coming into trend silhouette wise that you've not tried before, that are new to you. My favorite thing to do with a hyper silhouette is combine it with a wear everywhere color. I love this really beautiful top. It has satiny texture to it and it's got really big, beautiful sleeves. What makes an interesting silhouette really wearable is finding a shirt that you already love and wear. This white t-shirt I wear all the time. So when I saw a silhouette that was slightly different, but within that wear everywhere color story, meaning I won't need to purchase additional items to complement this top. Those are hyper pieces. Now, how do we choose ones that work for us? Stay tuned to the end because we're gonna be talking a lot more about color theory and how it can really help you dress your best. I love that, I'm literally so excited. Okay, first I'm gonna tell you about the new buying process. So let's think about when we make a list of items we want or you have something in mind that you wanna purchase or even if something comes up in your world that you're like, I think I might wanna buy this. We're always going to apply this process. Step one, we're gonna identify if the item is a need or a novelty. This t-shirt I'm looking at because I need a t-shirt in my wardrobe is a need for me. If it meets my standards and it's on budget, then we can move forward with the second step. For every item you wanna to add to your closet, make sure you have three options that can go easily with it that you already own. You don't wanna to have to buy additional items when you're adding things to your wardrobe. If it seems like you have things to support the purchase, then buy it and keep the receipt. Always be familiar with a brand's return policy because sometimes we imagine things are gonna go with your wardrobe, but they don't end up doing that. And in that case, it's time to bring it back. I'm never embarrassed to bring anything back. I always do. It's easy for me. And honestly, it's so worth it. This new buying process means you're gonna refine your hyper pieces, improve your shopping habits, and you're gonna get exactly what you want. When it comes to elevating my wardrobe, I have always been into shopping pre-loved. I love pre-loved. This is vintage. This is thrifting. This is my favorite designer consignment. There's something so beautiful about this because it's supporting sustainable shopping and it's also getting items into my wardrobe that I frankly would not have in my possession because the price point, right? But when you're shopping in designer consignment, the price point is completely different. And I'm really into older pieces. I love things that were made in an era where quality was king and the stitching was done by hand. I mean, for example, this bag is from 2007. It's half my age, it's 12 years old, and it still looks beautiful. I love it that much more because it's old. 
This video is sponsored in part by The Real Real. The brand is a luxury consignment website and app where you can find authentic luxury items at up to 90% off which means you can get your hands on Chanel, Hermes, Gucci, Givenchy, Celine. And since I've become a young woman, I feel like every year I buy myself a handbag to celebrate hard work, etc., etc. And when I'm shopping designer consignment, I'm always able to get something a little bit better than I would if I'm just going to the store. This one that I got, I was like, wow, this is literally like it's brand new. It came with the dust bag, still had the little stickers on it, and these cute little feet are like little details that I just so appreciate about a designer bag. This prevents the bag from touching anything and it keeps it looking fresh forever. I'm assuming that like the person maybe didn't want it because it has a spot on it or something, but it's funny because like what's not great in somebody else's wardrobe could turn into my favorite thing I've ever bought. I love how functional this is. It has like a hidden crossbody feature, which is such a classy, cool thing. Like to me, this is so cool that it's functional, but it also looks so stunning. And I like to style it in different ways. Like I'll open up these little closures, open up the accordion sides and like show the lock. It's so cute. And every item on this website is authenticated. Their team of experts are impeccable. Thank you to The Real Real for sponsoring this video. And also click the link in my description to get $25 off your first order. Bonus. It's either a glass of wine or green juice. There is no in between. Welcome to my closet. I'm going to show you something that I like to do. And I highly recommend doing this on like a Friday night or like a Sunday night. Whenever you can find some time and just relax and put some music on, pre-plan outfits for mornings when you're in a really big rush. One really huge overlooked aspect of dressing better is getting familiarized not with the trends on somebody else, not with the things that are like cute on like a certain website. It's getting familiar with you and what you own and what you like from what you own and what you don't like. Trying things on again, seeing if something that you thought was going to work still works, if there's a way you can style it so that maybe you're getting to wear it more often. This is just like that familiarization that I want you to start making with your clothing. You will never regret getting into your closet and putting together like three or four outfits that you can grab, especially for the moments when you're not putting effort into your look. Like if you're going for errands or something like that, having these pre-styled outfits is fantastic. And it's a good way to pull out things you'd never wear, but you always wanted to and make sure that these items get pre-styled, tried on and essentially worn. This is gonna help you dress better as a whole. Now in chapter three, we've covered a lot of the basics and the right mindset. So we're inching closer and closer to talking about clothing itself. Clothing itself brings a value to the table just in the essence of the color. Color theory is a really important factor and it's really powerful once you learn about it. The ultimate wardrobe is going to be made up of only neutrals and coupled with colors only in shades and values that actually flatter the person wearing the wardrobe. We're not going to be selecting colors that are on trend if they don't suit the person in them. First, you want to determine whether you're warm toned or cool toned. Cool toned people have pink tones in their skin and warm are more golden and yellow toned. To start, we need to ultimately understand that we ourselves need to train the eye, our eye. Now, in order to train your eye to see those subtle differences that honestly can make or break your look, it's important to check with the basics. The basics meaning white. White is the easiest thing we can all kind of get into and see the undertones that are different between each piece. Creamier whites that have yellow undertones are going to look best on warm tone skin. And when you see a crisp white that almost has a blue tone to it, I highly recommend if you're a warm tone to avoid this. Think of wearing the opposite undertone to your skin as throwing off the balance of your beauty. A cool toned person is going to look beautiful with a crisp blue toned white. And if you happen to be neutral and you have both cool and warm, you can wear neutral and both sides of the spectrum. Think of identifying whites as the baseline. Now we are ready to move on to colors that have different undertones. This is the same color, but one is warm on the left and one is cool on the right. When you start to purchase items that fall in line with your undertones, your whole wardrobe will become optimized. It also helps you create a standard when you're purchasing items so that you're buying the right ones. Oftentimes you're gonna see the same style of something, but in different colors, you're gonna see more than one color and you're like, which one do I get? Well, luckily with this one, we don't even need to look at the colors. We can just use warmth theory and look at the cool tone dress as making me really dull and uh, kind of washed out. Whereas the other one is gonna make me look bright and healthy and vital. You see, wearing the wrong colors doesn't make the clothing look bad, it makes you look bad, which is why it's really important to understand what does work for you. 
Now I can do a whole video on color theory because there's a lot to discuss, but I'm gonna keep going in small increments so we can start to build on what we know. The most naturally fascinating thing for me is like texture theory, the thinking that regardless of silhouette or color, the texture alone can influence the way the body looks. Light and dark exists in absolutely everything and it can affect the way our body looks in the clothing, regardless of the color of the clothing. Now this is a fabric that has a lot of shine to it, so does this one. This one's a little bit less shiny, it's more luminous. This silky texture deflects light and this matte texture absorbs light. Let's check this out. This is a dark skirt, so technically people say dark colors make you look slimmer, but this is interesting because there's shine in the fabric, this is actually going to emphasize curves and make them look much larger because of the shine deflecting light. And now that you can see that shinier fabrics make things look almost double in size, there's nothing wrong with that. We're gonna use that to our benefit and be selective about where we're putting our light absorbing fabrics and where we're putting the luminous ones. The hyper piece I showed you earlier is literally the perfect example. This one is sequined, so it's definitely reflecting light, but it's also patterned. So the eye naturally, subconsciously tries to count how many of those are there on this dress. Of course, your mind can't literally come up with a number, but it's like, wow, there's a lot of space there. Whereas looking at this dress, even though it's luminous, so it's technically reflecting light, it's also not causing the eye to want to count anything. So the eye is seeing this as streamlined simplicity, making it look slimmer. What's so fun and hot is to be able to belt or like absorb the light in the areas you want to look smaller, but still have that fun and like largeness coming from the sequins and the patterns in the areas you want to look bigger, like your chest or your bum. Now there's a really in-depth color theory I'm learning about that takes into account the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, and the warmth of your skin not the depth of your skin. So this is a really interesting theory and it tells me to hold up a fabric to my face and figure out what looks best on me. The best colors are gonna make you look alive and well and the ones that are like washing you out or making you look a bit sick are not your color palette. For example, Devony is going to really pull off darker, richer colors and brights. For a washed out red, it's not going to be as effective as a deep, rich, high opacity red. This is going to kind of compete with her skin and it's also a bit cool toned and Devony is quite warm. So this color brings out her beauty perfectly. If you would like me to do a video all about color theory, please give this video a thumbs up. And this is the completion of how to dress better. We learned all about how hyper pieces can be ruining our life. We learned how to prevent makeup from getting on our shirt and creating strong foundations that make it easier for us to build a look that really does look good for us. If you wanna keep building on this, I'm gonna link in the description some videos that pair beautifully with this content. Uh, I love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.